Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two talking about the test management and continuing ahead with the next segment that is 2.5 test estimation. Now this is the part one of the test estimation and we'll be getting a basic introduction to what exactly test estimation is all about. In order to understand what exactly test estimation is, uh, first of all, we must have a basic definition to that. Of course, uh, the test estimation is all about estimating the required effort, cost and time about any activity which you conduct as a part of the testing lifecycle. And of course, each one of them has to be estimated. Why? Because we must be aware of that how much time any activity is going to take and based on these estimations we can actually draft or lay out the entire schedule for the timeline which you are allocated with in order to conduct testing. Now being very blind or being just vague that okay you have got three months of time and we can complete everything, no that doesn't work out. But estimation is basically to allocate certain things as well. It's just not about predicting that how much time and effort will be required in order to do an activity. It is more about predicting that will that be taking so long or will that be taking a lot of time or budget from your schedule or is there anything which we can reduce here and put at some somewhere else. Now, of course, a lot of factors, a lot of considerations will be taken into account while doing this estimation. And of course, different people's perception and contribution is very efficient. Estimation as a management activity, it is the creation of an approx approximate target for the cost and completion dates associated with the activities involved in a particular operation for the project. The best estimate must represent the collective wisdom of experienced practitioners and have the support of the participants involved, but provide a specific detailed catalog of the cost, resources, tasks and people involved. Present for each activity estimated the most likely cost, effort and duration. So main intention here is to determine the estimates for the cost, time and effort. Estimation of software and system engineering has long been known to be fraught with difficulties, both technical and political. Though project management best practices for estimations are well established, the test estimation is the application of these best practices to the testing activities associated with a project or operation. Now we have to agree that no matter how well you try to estimate, but still there are a few things which are surprises waiting for you on the way. Though you plan for every activity and you determine uh, no matter how effectively you estimate everything and plan for each and every activity and their specific duration and effort, still, still at some point of time you may experience some of the unforeseen situations and the plan and estimates can go here and there. So we have been seeing this for a long time and still we have created from these outcomes that the retrospectives and the test closure meetings basically help you to determine that what generally went wrong and how you could have tackled it. In case it was possible to prevent it to happen, we could have prevented it. So we just make a note of such things in our uh, retrospectives and try to implement that right at the beginning when it comes to the next project. So we try to improvise every time we take up a new project and try to reduce our unforeseen situations to make our estimates more stronger, more reliable and of course helping you to achieve your deadlines on the desired timeline. The test estimation should cover all the activities involved in the test process. Now, of course you know the test process from the chapter 1 as well as the from the foundation that what exactly a fundamental test process is all about. So estimation is just not limited to any particular activity. It can be used for any activity which you perform throughout the testing life cycle. The estimated cost, effort and especially the duration of test execution is often of the most interest to the management. Of course, management is the main person who is responsible for this. It's a mere task of the test manager. Being a test manager, it's your responsibility to estimate uh, all the activities with all three factors. And not only that, you get involved with the project management and see that how much time they can actually allocate to you, what budget they have allocated to you for the testing life cycle. Now, further to add, of course, uh, the uh, test execution is often of the most interest to the management as test execution is typically on the project's critical path. 
However, the test execution estimates tend to be difficult to generate and unreliable when the overall quality of the software is low or unknown. In addition, familiarity and experience with the system will likely affect the quality of the estimate. So being aware of what exactly your product qualities are at that point of time that the number of executions you have done or what kind of expectations you are setting up from the product can definitely help you to do a better estimation. What more? Of course, the test estimation should consider all the factors that can influence the cost, effort and duration of the testing activities. These factors include but are again not limited to the following. So here we are just giving you a quick list of many factors but of course depending on the project characteristics, product characteristics, domain specifications, type of the product which you are developing, there are many other factors which we just can't list on our particular slideshow. Well, getting started with the very first one, required level of quality of the system. How? What is the level of quality you need? That means, is there a hard and fast rule that you should have 95% of uh, executions done or 95% of risk being mitigated or number of defects which are resolved or, you know, what is your agreed limit and all those sort of things which you are going to accept. Size of the system to be tested, huge or small. Now, small, of course, less effort, but if it is huge, definitely going to take a lot of time. Historical data from testing for previous test projects which may be augmented with the industry data or benchmark data from other organizations as well. Because you might be doing something for the first time, then you must be aware that what the other organizations, what the similar type of projects have done in before and what were their outcomes. So you can take those informations as a reference or basis to determine your estimate. Process factors, of course, the process plays a vital role what kind of process you're going to follow and including the strategy development or maintenance life cycle and process maturity model which your organization is having and the accuracy of the project estimate the how accurate you can basically be because of course we are humans and we do, do understand that things can be you know slightly here and there but of course to be aware of what is your tolerance is very critical Material factors including the test automation and tools, test environment, test data, development environment, project documentation and reusable test work products. They also play a vital role in terms of your estimation because these documents will support you during the entire execution of the life cycle. But if in case your documentation is poor, probably you don't have the necessary information which you may need at any point of time, things can be weird as well. People factor, what kind of team do you have? What kind of people you have? Because they are, they are the effective contributor to your process. No matter I estimate that this task should be completed in 30 hours of time, but the people are not so you know effective and probably you have the team who is not a domain expert or probably good experience with testing, but not, not aware of what is the product, could take longer than that. So including managers and technical leaders, executive and senior management, commitment and expectations, skills, experience and attributes in the project team, stability of the project team, uh, project team relationship, test and debugging environment support, availability of skilled contractors and consultants and domain knowledge will be a factor for the people which you have. That's not all. Further to continue, complexity of the process, technology, organization, number of testing stakeholders, compositions, location of the sub-teams do become a factor to be considered. Because well, if you talk about the complexity of the process has a lot of dependencies and further you know, reliability from different stakeholders, then of course you need to have uh, to wait to get certain information from other stakeholders. And location of the sub-teams have a communication gap or you have a geographical distribution and you have a time zone difference, then communication and collaboration also becomes an issue. Significant ramp up, ramp up training and orientation needs. Time to time you need to look forward to uh, keep training and mentoring your team members to add more value to their efficiency. Assimilation or development of new tool, technology, process, technique, custom hardware or a large quantity of testware. Now at any point of time it's not mandatory that you might be using the same tool for a new project which you have been using for years. The moment you get a new project, probably you are looking forward to a new tool as well and maybe you know, acquiring that tool, setting up that tool, running it for a pilot project. A lot of other things which are there should be considered for the entire test estimation.
Requirement for high degree of detail test specification, especially to comply with an unfamiliar standard of documentation. Things are there. Sometimes you do prefer to have a very high detailed information in order to process some of the objects and features. And if you don't find that, that could probably take more time or, you know, consume more time or maybe not available at the moment when you need it. Complex timing of component arrival, that means synchronization between other stakeholders that whether you will be getting those, uh, you know, code at the time when you are looking forward to start. So aligning your activities with those of the development activity becomes very important. For Xyle test data, of course, data that is time sensitive, which are specific to the certain things like, you know, if only if this activity is done, for example, a PNR, if I have to test the PNR value, then I have to, you know, book a flight. Without booking a flight, I cannot generate a PNR. And in order to test the PNR, I must wait for the other modules to be completed so that I can book a ticket and then generate the PNR or itinerary. So that's the same thing when you talk about the time dependent data or fragile test data that again have further, you know, considerations to be taken into account. Further, the quality of the software delivered for testing is also a major factor that test managers should consider in their estimation. Like what kind of quality you have promised and that you will be delivering at the end of the life cycle. So it's very, very crucial that test manager look forward to all the factors which have any kind of uh, relationship in order to impact or influence any of the factors of the estimation that is cost, budget and time then the test manager should look forward to consider all of them to do a better and appropriate estimation for the project. Well, that was all from the part one of this particular session. We will be getting back to you with the part two in the next tutorial. Should you have any other questions with you, feel free to drop them below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.